Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning. We are starting a brand new sermon series this week that will culminate on November 21st with our Pledge Sunday. Yes, that means for the next three weeks we will be talking about money. Now, I see some of you are already squirming in your seats. If it's taboo to talk about religion and politics in public, it seems just as taboo to talk about money in church. Now, I can understand for some of us why that is true. We've been guilted at times in our lives to giving to organizations or charities or TV evangelists, and yes, even guilted into giving to churches. Well, this morning, I'm not here to guilt you into giving to anyone. I am here to tell some simple biblical truths about the use of our money. The truth is the church should be a real safe place to talk about finances. If, if there's any place in the world we should be able to openly and honestly talk about money, it should be in the church. Why? Because I know, and you know lots of people, and maybe even yourselves, who are struggling with your personal finances. You know, and I know, people who are currently unemployed. You know, and I know friends, family members, loved ones who can't pay their bills. Church, we are talking about money because people need some hope when it comes to money in their lives. Now, right now in the United States, our unemployment rate in the state of Ohio is over 10%. Now, that's far better than the 13.1% of the state of Michigan, but that means lots of us know people who are without jobs. In fact, I would venture to say that each and every one of us know someone, love someone, maybe even are related to someone who is finding themselves without a job. Now, we are not in the financial place that we were as a nation in 2008 and 2009, but we certainly haven't rebound from the recession in the ways that we had hoped to rebound from the recession. We were hoping for much, much war by 2010. But we're not the only nation, we're not the only people in history to experience this kind of financial burden. In the 1700s, in the country of England, there's a group of people called Methodists who found themselves in a similar situation. It was the boom of the Industrial Revolution. The rich were getting richer, and the poor were getting poorer and working harder. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Right. And all these folks living in rural areas were having to migrate to the cities to find gainful employment. To say the least, times were tough. And it was during this time in 1760 that one of the founding fathers of United Methodism, John Wesley, wrote a sermon called The Use of Money on this Bible passage that we heard. In fact, John Wesley preached on this passage 27 times before he wrote this sermon. Now, he wasn't afraid to talk about money, was he? Because why? People needed hope. And so John Wesley preaches this sermon, what Reverend James Harnish calls simple rules for money. There are three of them. Three simple rules that can help each and every one of us navigate our financial challenges. They are earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Let's say those again. Earn all you can. Save all you can, give all you can. Now all together, earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Sounds pretty simple, right? Much harder to live, right? So this morning, we're going to explore the first of those simple rules. This morning, we are going to explore this simple rule because I believe it can help each and every one of us navigate the financial situations we find ourselves in. 
This morning, we're going to learn what it means to earn all that we can. I want to invite you to open up your Bibles or pull out your sermon notes, and let's take a look at Luke chapter 16. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about lost things in chapter 15 with Jesus. And Jesus moves from talking about lost stuff like sheep and sons to talking about managing your money. In this passage, Jesus is talking about a particular manager who doesn't manage his money well. Now, Jesus is not afraid to talk about money. In fact, Jesus talks more about money than anything else in the Gospels. Why? Because Jesus is hanging out with all kinds of people who need hope in their lives. And so he is unafraid of talking about personal finance. Now, isn't that interesting that Jesus isn't afraid about talk, is not afraid to talk about money, but we as Christians, as Christ followers, sometimes hesitate to talk about money in church. Jesus is unapologetic about it, and perhaps we should learn something from the man that we serve. So here he is, Jesus, talking about a manager who doesn't know how to manage his money. In fact, this manager is so bad that he gets himself fired. And he, this manager recognizes that he doesn't have a lot to offer. He says, I cannot dig, I cannot beg, what am I going to do? So he decides to cheat his boss, right? That's exactly what the scripture says. He decides to cheat the master, thinking that at, at the very least, if he makes friends of his boss's debtors, that he will be welcomed into their homes. This is exactly what happens and so we think that this unruly manager, we think that this guy who is not a good manager, we think of him and we think, what is he doing? What is God doing with this guy? We recognize that the master ends up commending this manager. I mean, he still gets fired. He still loses his job. And yet the master commends him for looking out for himself. What is Jesus saying to all of us in this passage? Well, this is exactly what Jesus is saying. He's saying, you know those people out in the world? They know how to play this financial game. But you all, you all struggle at it. Everyone in the world, they know how to look, on their, look out for their own behalf, but you all, you're not very good at looking out for yourselves. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 16, verse, verse 9. This is what Jesus says, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you in true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. No one can serve both God and money. Now, if we can't serve as God's people, both God and money, how on earth are we going to be able to play this financial game. I mean, Jesus isn't making a whole lot of sense here. How on earth can we play the game if we can't serve both God and money? We earn all we can. That's how we play the financial game. We earn all we can by working as hard as we can with the utmost integrity. Now, earning all you can is God's green light to play the financial game. But there are limitations to earning all you can. Well, what's the first? The first limitation is that we earn all we can by working really hard without hurting ourselves. We earn all we can by working really hard without hurting ourselves in the process. Jesus understood that this crooked manager had limitations. In fact, this is what Jesus says in Luke 16, verse 3. The manager said to himself, What shall I do? 
My master is taking away my job, and I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm too ashamed to beg. You know, as human beings, sometimes we fail to recognize our limitations. Do you realize that you have emotional, physical, and spiritual limitations when it comes to your work? I mean, many times people say to me, just jokingly, don't work yourself to death. But if you're like me, I find myself working harder and longer all the time. It's really difficult for us to have boundaries in our lives that keep us from working ourselves in such a way that we harm ourselves and perhaps harm the ones we love in the process. John Wesley, 250 years ago, understood this stuff when he wrote this sermon on the use of money. He realized that during the Industrial Revolution that, that people could harm themselves by working. I mean, think about the hazardous conditions that these people found themselves in, working with chemicals and, and materials with zero safety standards or regulations. When, when John Wesley said to these folks, don't, don't work in places of, with hazardous materials, he was saying, don't kill yourselves, literally. Because if you are in those places, you might lose a hand or a leg or an arm, and worse yet, you might lose your life. He not only cautioned people about working in hazardous environments, but he also cautioned people about working on desk jobs. Why? Because he recognized that if you sat at a desk for 10, 12, 15 hours, that you could harm your back and your stomach and your legs, all kinds of things that he believed were not productive, were not good for the greater gain. Listen to what he says about working in healthy conditions. But whatever it is which reason or experience shows to be destructive of health or strength, that we may not submit to, seeing that life is more valuable than meat and the body more than raiment. Now, what is John Wesley saying there? He's saying, look, your life is more valuable than what you eat. Your life is more valuable than what you wear. Your life is more valuable than your paycheck. Are you with me? Your life is more valuable than your paycheck. Earn all you can, but in the process, do not hurt yourself. Earn all you can, but in the process, don't take yourself out. Earn all you can, but make sure that you're taking care of your mind, your body, and your soul so that you don't get taken out of your work or worse, someone you love gets taken out because of the way that you work. So the first limitation is earn all you can, but don't harm yourself in the process. 